Okay, hello and welcome to this webinar on how to find data in Europe, organised by CESTA. Uh, my name is Jane Buckley and I'm based at the University of Manchester and work for the UK Data Service. And I will be joined today by Oliver Wattler from GASIS. Okay, so here's an overview of the webinar. And um, we're going to start with a short background to CESTA and social science data services. I will then discuss some of the data that's available, how to find the analysis. Um, we'll then take a look at two national data services in some more detail. So first we'll look at cases in Germany and then the UK data service. And these are two of the largest in Europe. There will then be time for questions. Um, you can ask your questions by typing them into the questions box on the webinar panel. And this box is normally to the right of your screen. If you can't see it, you may need to maximise the box by clicking on a red arrow box. Uh, you can type questions at any point, um, but we'll pick them up and answer them at the end. So, CESDA. CESDA is a consortium of European social science data archives, and its vision is to provide a full-scale, sustainable research infrastructure that enables the research community to conduct high-quality research. And the key tasks um, underlying this vision include developing standards and practices around um, the management and archiving of social science data, and also facilitating researcher access to these important resources. Some of this work is done through providing training, uh, and also by coordinating the network of European data service providers. Um, so national um, data services um, are the core operational bodies in CESDA. So national data services provide access to comprehensive collections of data, uh, useful for social and economic research. You may be familiar with the service in your country or some of the larger data services that operate in Europe. And many of the data services that are in Europe are members of SESTA. So this image on your screen is from the SESTA website and it highlights the different national data services that are in Europe. So social science data will typically combine uh, the archiving of research data with some activities to make that data available for research, teaching and learning. And core activities include things like checking data and metadata, maintaining catalogues and managing access to data. Uh, many services also seek to obtain data for their collection and to develop training for both those creating data and for users of data. The range of data available is diverse, um, so many services have both quantitative and qualitative data in their collections, though quantitative data from social surveys is the most prevalent. Data can come from major academic projects, um, which are often sort of designed with this idea of data sharing in mind, but national data services also provide access to data collections from governments and policy-focused organisations, and then also small research teams and individual researchers. Um, factors such as an interest in extending the benefits of investment in research and making research transparent are supporting um, trends towards greater archiving and sharing of data. So some examples uh, of key data collections. Um, do note that after the webinar, um, the slides and some supplementary materials about the studies and data services mentioned uh, will be made available to you. So don't worry too much about catching all the details. Um, so many European countries participate in international survey research programs. Uh, one example is the International Social Survey Programme. Um, this is an annual program of cross-national collaboration on surveys and it consists of thematic modules on a range of topics including um, the role of government, family and change, changing gender roles, the environment, um, health and healthcare. And then these modules are then rotated across different years. So for example, the citizenship module has been run in 2004 and 2014. Another good example is SHARE. Um, so SHARE is a survey of health, ageing and retirement in Europe. And this survey is longitudinal, so it collects data from more than 123,000 individuals aged 50 or older. Um, and that's in 27 European countries and Israel. And so SHARE then provides microdata on health, uh, socioeconomic status, social and family networks, 
and is a major resource for research into ageing. Many of the cross-national studies and also some national studies have dedicated infrastructures and websites um, distributing data such as this one for SHARE and this one for the European Social Survey. Um, and these portals are a really valuable uh, resource containing relevant uh, documentation for the data, information about access and additional resources such as reports and publications on both substantive findings and methodological issues. Uh, access to other sort of some of the cross-national studies is via one of the national data services. So, for example, data for the International Social Survey Program um, is available by ASIS in Germany, who are responsible for sort of harmonising and integrating all the individual um, national data sets that form the integrated data set. Uh, we can also hi highlight Eurostat as a source of cross-national data in Europe. So Eurostat is the statistical office of the European Union. And the key task of Eurostat is to provide statistics at the European level that enable comparison between countries and regions. Um, and there is also access to microdata. So, for example, there's the European Union Statistics on Income and Living Conditions, the EU SILC, uh, and that provides microdata on income, poverty, and living conditions. And there's also um, the European Union Labour Force Survey, which gives harmonised data on employment and related topics. Another example is longitudinal studies. So longitudinal studies are a precious resource for social and economic research um, as by tracking the same individuals over time they enable analysis of change at the individual level. Um, on the screen here these are household panel studies and they each follow households over time and ask questions on a broad range of topics such as employment and earnings health and life satisfaction as well as things like social and political participation. Uh, the German socioeconomic panel is a study of nearly 11,000 households and uh, that started in 1984. Um, Understanding Society is a very large study uh, which follows the lives of 40,000 UK households and that started in 2009 but it also incorporated participants in an older panel study that lasted 20 years. Uh, the Swiss Household Panel Study started in 1999 with a sample of just over 5,000. So next, how to find data from national data services. Um, so national data services have websites uh, with online catalogues for searching or browsing. The example on the screen here is for the catalogue for Dams in the Netherlands. And these catalogues allow you to search using terms such as ageing. Um, searching large archives can be demanding and you can get a lot of results to consider uh, but the tools generally offer ways to sort of sort and refine your results so for example here I've sorted by date. Um, language can be an issue so fortunately websites and catalogues are often in multiple languages so typically the national languages of the country and also English. Um, but sometimes uh, the sort of busy go down, the data and documentation may only be available in one language. Um, when searching, it can also be useful to consider alternative spellings of key search terms. Here is another example from Ford in Switzerland. So their online platform Fordspace allows researchers to register research projects and to store and share their data. Um, so then others can obtain information about social science studies and then also access others data. Um, as you can see here the list of studies tells you whether there is archived data and there's, there's also an option to search just for um, entries with data. Um, many data service providers use an online platform called Nestar. So Nestar enables online data browsing and also analysis. Uh, you can also download tables, graphs, data files and study descriptions. Some data services use Nestor as their main tool for searching and accessing data, while others sort of use Nestor as a separate tool to their main catalogue. Using Nestor, um, the help pages include lots of helpful user guidance and can be accessed at any time um, by clicking the question mark at the top of the screen. So you can find information and links to all of the national data services on the SESTA website. 
uh, in June, uh, there'll be a new look to the CESTA website and we'll be adding lots of useful uh, resources, including a recording of this webinar. So a reasonable question is, why is there not just one single catalogue with all the data? Um, as this would make finding and accessing data much easier. Um, but fortunately, um, this is in progress. So CESTA are currently building a catalogue and it's due to go into service in 2018. And when operational, you'll be able to search for data sources from all CESTA service providers. And a further tool to highlight, um, those working with survey data, are variable and question banks like this one for the Swedish National Data Service. So these allow you to search for variables and questions across data sets. And this functionality is useful for finding surveys with relevant questions and also the use of the same question across different surveys. Uh, they can also be useful for those designing surveys because they give examples of question design. Um, not all services have a variable in question bank, but again, CESTA are developing a European question bank, uh, which should be very useful for finding similar questions across different countries. So having found data, what do you do to get it? Um, well, a general principle within CESTA is that all data holding will be available to anyone, regardless of status, nation or type of use. Uh, except if you are redistributing them or if there are other known requirements which prevent it. In practice, you will generally find that you can access most data collections following a fairly simple registration process. Um, however, access arrangements do vary across data services and across different data collections. And the differences largely reflect um, the needs of those who own the data and their need for, um, to protect uh, the anonymity of research participants is, is an important factor. Uh, so here are some arrangements in place uh, across data services. So first, some services support access to open data collections, uh, which can be downloaded by any type of user without registration. Um, but as I said, you normally do need to register the data service before accessing data. In some cases, uh, university researchers register using their institutional details, like their username and password. Otherwise, you need to provide an email address and possibly institutional details. You may also, um, for some services, need to wait uh, to receive a username and password before you can access data. In some cases, you may um, be asked to also register the use of data. And this is a requirement which really helps data creators and also data services understand the impact of their work, so how data is being used. Um, you will usually be uh, agreeing to terms and conditions as part of the registration process uh, or when accessing data. And common terms and conditions that we'll find include things like not trying to identify individuals, households or organisations in the data and not distributing the data to others. Some restrictions about the use of data are also common. So most typically, um, you might find that data is for non-commercial use only, uh, or use in research or teaching only. Um, often you download uh, data directly from the catalog, but some services ask you to register data, uh, um, to make a request for the data. Additionally, access to some data collections may require permission from the data owners, and then this adds a, a sort of the additional stage to the access procedure. Also, more strict applications generally operate the data collections considered to contain sensitive or confidential data. And some services uh, operate um, sort of dedicated safe rooms or remote settings for analysing this kind of data. And finally, access to data documentation and metadata is generally free, uh, but charges can apply in some cases for commercial use. Uh, or for supplementary services, such as burning data to a CD. And you should find access conditions for each data collection displayed clearly in the catalogue. Um, and also, if you're unsure, you can ask the data service for help. And we have also produced some materials, uh, which we'll give at the end of the webinar, with some more detailed information about finding and accessing data from national data services. Um, so a key issue um, in secondary data analysis is how to make sense of your data. 
um, so to understand the meaning of data and to evaluate the suitability of it, your research question, you need to know things like what information was collected, from who, when, where, and what was done to the resulting data. And a core aim is that all data collections have documentation that allows use without recourse to the data creator. So documentation might include user guides, survey questionnaires, interview schedules, and fieldwork notes. And um, this documentation is usually um, accessible directly from the catalogue and will come as things like PDF documents that allow you to search. Um, but the format and quality varies, especially for the older studies. Um, some services, uh, where the resources allow, offer support to help users understand data, do things like help desks and also by training. Finally, um, when using existing data, it is good practice to cite the data. So data citations give credit to the data creators, and they also allow other researchers to find the data. So in general, the citation should include enough information so that the exact version of the data being cited can be located. And usefully, many services provide a recommended citation for each of their data collections. And some also provide a persistent identifier such as a digital object identifier, DOI. Um, so here's an example from the UK Data Service for Understanding Society. OK, so at this point, I will hand over to Oliver, um, who will talk uh, to us about the Gatos Data Archive in Germany. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you can see the slides. Um, I have a short presentation on GESIS, the Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences. Uh, we are one of the leading social science infrastructures in Europe with over 50 years of experience, along with institutions like the UKDA or the Norwegian Data Service. Um, the Data Archive was founded in 1960, uh, very much in line with what Jan just presented uh, for SASTA. Uh, our objectives are research-based infrastructure services, mainly distributing data, but also other uh, things around the data. And we do interdisciplinary research. Uh, GESIS covers the entire life cycle of research data. So we are also uh, a data gathering organization, for example, for the German General Social Survey. And our focus here is on, on surveys. Uh, we have five departments. Among them is the data archive for the social sciences. What are the objectives and tasks? Um, we want to advance social science by promoting wide data sharing. So um, the better the data we offer, the, uh, the better for research. Our tasks are pr to provide this high quality data and data services. So you can always email and contact us about details of the data uh, we do data confrontation seminars and other things. Uh, we also develop standards and infrastructure solutions for data sharing. Uh, we are, for example, part of the DDI Alliance, uh, yeah, developing an XML standard for the exchange of metadata. And we conduct research on social change and as well uh, on archiving and data management. The data archive holds close to 6,000 studies, mostly surveys with a strong focus on international comparison. Um, Jen has just pointed out to this. Those surveys are probably among the most widely used uh, data sets uh, in the social sciences. We do have a collection of time series, mostly economic time series, but also social indicators. And we have a small uh, set of, of historical data um, so as historians using social science methods to gather data from archives uh, and other sources. We are home to, um, as Jen has just shown you, for example, the International Social Survey Program. The German General Social Survey forms part of this. Uh, but also, for example, we have a strong um, hold on, on election studies, the comparative study of electoral systems, and the German National Election Study or um, one very prominent uh, survey series is the Eurobarometer survey series co uh, commissioned by the European Commission, um, 6, 600 surveys by now. 
and uh, you can access the data um, through our website and there's a screenshot here and the demonstration I will just show you briefly how to get to our catalog that's probably the most valuable information you you want to take home from this webinar it's the main access point we do also run a Nesta server for collections like the ISSP or the Eurobarometers uh, which is called Zakat um, and we also have specialized websites for collections. So let me just briefly stop the presentation and move in our, our website here live. Um, I guess you can see this. You can search the website entirely via the, uh, this uh, possibility up here, search cases. But if you go under services and then research, this will take you to all search possibilities, all search tools. The main point is the, the data holding catalog uh, up here. And you can also go directly to the data catalog down here, which enables you to do a, a more detailed uh, search with more keywords. Let me just show you the, the catalog. It looks very much like catalogs you probably know for years uh, from libraries or other data services. Uh, you've got your uh, simple and advanced search possibilities. And if we look, for example, for the German General Social Survey, which is called the Albus 2016, The search will take you to the holdings, and here you've got the uh, two versions of the the albums, a compact and a, a complete version. And if you click on the on the title here, this will take you to a full description of the study, including information on on methods, uh, data, and documents. But also, um, this is um, related to the DOI that Jen mentioned of. Uh, Errata, errors in the data that have been discovered and versions. So uh, most of the main um, collections do have several uh, versions uh, of the data. So watch out when you cite your data to properly name the version. And if you go to data and documentation, this will take you directly to the data sets. And um, you can either download the data after registering, registering uh, that is true for most of our holdings. Um, so if you click on SAF, this is the SPSS version. You, this will ask you to log in. You first have to create an account, uh, which is a easy two-way, uh, two-step process. We will send you a, a login name and a password, and then you can download this data for free for academic research and teaching. And uh, also, as mentioned before, uh, there are some restricted data sets as well. So we have, and some uh, times we do have to ask data providers, uh, primary investigators, for their uh, admission to distribute the data. And for a number of data sets, a very small uh, number of data sets, uh, we do run a secure data center for on-site. Um, analysis. But all um, information is available through the catalog. So you, this, as you can see here, there's a, uh, the, the access class, which tells you if you are allowed to, to access the data set or not, if there are any restrictions applying, the term, terms of use. And here you can also go to the documents um, that are related to the survey. OK, uh, let me close this and back to the presentation. We've seen this. Um, as I said, mainly we, we're offering data for scientific reuse. There are time series and, and very few data sets which are public, available to the general public as open access. There are four access classes and um, all users can register. Uh, there are no national restrictions. 
those m sometimes apply. So if you want to access um, a data repository in another country, uh, they might tell you uh, either contact your national uh, data archive or data distributor or um, re register via a, a national service or in f a few cases you are not allowed to access data at all. Um, but we do not uh, impose any restrictions. We do run a facility that's called Eurolab, uh, which grants, um, well, which offers grants for research visits. So if you are looking at anal analyzing any of the data sets we are offering and you uh, would like to exchange information or your research experience with the staff working on the data and our scientific staff, uh, you're happy to apply for one of those grants. And as I said before, we do have the Secure Data Center uh, for access to more sensitive, in quotation marks, data. We do not offer any official microdata that is only done by the statistical offices in Germany. But there are some data sets that we deem sensitive in a way, so you can only access them on site at Gezes in Cologne. And that's from my side. Um, back to Jen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just get my screen back up here. Great, okay. So I'm just going to talk a little bit now about the UK Data Service. Um, so the UK Data Service is the UK's largest collection of social, economic and population data. And we also give a lot of support to users through training and guidance. Um, here are the main types of data that we have available. So the cloud collection includes um, major UK and cross-national surveys, um, including major sort of government-sponsored surveys on topics such as crime, health and family resources. There are a number of longitudinal studies, so for example, in addition to understanding society, which um, I mentioned earlier, there is also some major cohort studies which are following individuals um, that were born in 1958, 1970 and 2000. Um, there's international macro data, um, and these contain socio-economic time series data aggregated to a country or regional level for a range of countries and over a substantial time period. Um, so many of these data banks are the current releases of the major statistical publications produced by organisations such as the World Bank, IMF and OECD. There's also data from the UK Census from 1971 to 2011. And we have some quality data collections as well. Uh, these things like index interview transcripts, diaries, anthropological field notes, answers to open-ended survey questions. There is also some business and administrative data, although these have more limited access rights. Um, the UK Data Service also has an online repository called WeShare for researchers to archive and uh, publish and share their research data. And this helps support the requirement for researchers uh, with grants from the UK's Economic and Social Research Council to archive the data from their research projects. Uh, with regard to access, um, most data is available to anyone following uh, registration with the UK Data Service. Um, otherwise, there are some open data collections that are available for anyone to use without registration. Um, those in the in UK higher education can use their institutional logins to register. Otherwise, uh, users need to apply for the UK Data Archive username and password. We also have a secure data lab and a safe room for sensitive or confidential data. Um, there's lots of information on the website about using these uh, services, um, but note that users um, not in the UK cannot access control data via um, the secure lab. Um, most data sets can be downloaded directly from the website, and for many surveys you can also use Nestor. So I'm going to take you to the website and give you a short tour. So this is our homepage. Um, from here you can access data, resources and links to um, training events. Um, you can start finding data uh, by just typing a search term into the central box on the front. So I'm going to type in health as an example and then this will take you through to discover uh, which is our search tool. So discover will search for the word in the title uh, description or keywords for a survey. Um, sorry, for a data holding. 
Uh, and here are the results for health. So there's um, over 3,000 results in total. Um, and the size of the collection does make it sometimes hard to find the right data, but there's the options to sort uh, down here, and then also to refine your search. So you can look for specific data types. You can narrow the time period that you're looking for data for, or sort of spatial levels or units of analysis. There's also a variable and um, question bank, which can be accessed here. Um, so we can type, uh, again, typing in health, and then it brings up questions uh, related to health. Um, we have a guide available with more information about how to find data and using the Discover Search tool. So all the methods uh, finding data are available under the Get Data menu. Um, we've got um, theme pages which help find data, so for key themes such as ageing, crime, economics, um, it lists the um, most relevant data collections for researching these topics. Key data um, is also a really useful way to find the major data collections. So these are listed under the, the main different types of data. And it lists over the UK surveys, it lists all the major surveys that are happening. Um, so to take you through to, uh, to access data, I'll just click on this. So this is one of the British Social Attitude Surveys. It's um, been running for 30 years. And this is a series page for um, this survey. And through here, you can access all the individual surveys for each year. And if I click on this, it takes you through to the catalogue page. A little bit slowly, <laughs> but hopefully. Here we go. Um, so this provides um, all the, the sort of summary information about the data collection. So there's an abstract of um, the descriptive information and then a summary of um, what the data relates to, and then also access to all the further documentation that supports um, the, the data set. To access the data, um, you click download and order, and if needed, it will then prompt you to either log in or to register as a new user. Um, to uh, analyze online in Nestar, there's a, a button here that takes you through to the Nestar catalog. And you can see all of the data that we have available in Nestor here. And in addition to Nestor, we have other tools for exploring online. So, for example, we have UKDS.stat, which is an interface for um, exploring the socioeconomic uh, international data sets. And that has tools for creating graphs and then downloading um, parts of the data. Um, we have guides and other resources available through the Use Data menu, and these include uh, written guides and video tutorials, and they cover sort of different data sets, um, topics, uh, methods, and also software. The news and events uh, provide details of our training courses and other training courses that are available in the UK, and there's information about um, sort of webinars and, and other kind of events that are occurring. And help can be accessed here at the top right. And this will take you through to um, several frequently asked questions pages, which cover a lot of key issues about finding and accessing data, and then also our email help desk. Thank you very much uh, for attending today, from both me and from Oliver.